Hey, how's it going, guys? My name is Jackie Fish, and welcome to Valor and Victory. I want to go ahead and give a massive shout out to Slivering Games for sponsoring this video. They are recently. They have just released the brand new Arnhem DLC that you can check out using the link down below in the description. And in this DLC, you of course take a look at the Arnhem Offensive Operation Market Garden by the Allies as they try and take vital railroads and, and bridges to cut off the Axie supply. Obviously, the Axis hold firm in this historically and make the British and American soldiers have to regroup. But will you be able to turn the tides? Valor and Victory is also also a great game for those of you trying to get into the wargaming uh, I guess genre because it can be kind of overwhelming and a little bit scary at some times especially when you look at the absolutely mammoth and amazing Gary Grigsby's War in the East I absolutely adore that game but if you're looking to kind of build up to that Valor and Victory is great as it is also a faithful adaptation of the board game as well so if you ever played that or seen that you'll feel right at home here and I picked this game up within about two missions which is pretty impressive uh, it does a great job of showing you it's kind of great on the surface and then you can dive a bit deeper later on so as i said check out the dlc down below in the description and also a massive thank you to sliverin for sponsoring the game I also mentioned as well all the different scenarios. So you have two Russian offensive scenarios right here, which you can basically dive into. Each of them have loads of missions to play as from both of the factions. You have the, uh, the Battle of Arnhem, which is the brand new DLC, which we'll be playing today. And you have the uh, a tutorial, which does a great job. Battle of Stalingrad, and then the Battle of Normandy on the British sector and also the American sector. So nothing in the Pacific quite yet, but maybe in the future, we'll maybe get a look at that. Um, and you can play as both the Americans, British, Axis, and Russians in all of these scenarios as well. So you can, there's not like a set side you have to pick from. As I said, of course, we'll be showing off the brand new DLC today, and we're playing the Battle of Arnhem. So there are six new operations in here, and you can play, um, you can play any of them, and you can adjust for length and time and the bias of them. So if you're playing them and they're a little bit too hard or a little bit too easy you can adjust this stuff to make it and give yourself a little bit of more artificial difficulty and as i said there's even this massive uh, 25 turn game scenario right here which is pretty crazy uh, you can see the amount of units everybody has as well 37 waffen ss in the bridge too far um is crazy and the british have 53 paratroopers as well uh, a bunch of support equipment artillery guns vehicles snipers yeah it is a big one um, and something I didn't mention as well is that this game does have great multiplayer support as well. So if you want to sit down with one of your friends and play out this scenario, you can do so. And it's going to take up a good portion of your afternoon, uh, but it's going to be worth it. It really, really is. So we're going to play the beginning scenario, though, because it is a little bit more introductory. It's a bit slower paced. And I can really go ahead and show you guys exactly how to play. And I think after watching this video, you'll be more than capable of diving in and doing it yourself. Because as I said, it's really easy to pick up and play and just such a good entry level into wargaming. So this is a six turn scenario game, not a 25 scenario game. And as you can see, the actual units and equipment you have is much more reduced um, compared to the how, how many was it? Yeah, 37 Waffen SS and uh, some more of these smaller Waffen SS units and the 78 normal rifle units. Uh, we're rocking with six rifles, some LMGs, and some grenades as well. We'll play as Captain, uh, as Major Lewis, as he pushes on the road. Uh, and we actually have Major Lewis right here. We'll talk about a bit more about these stats as we get into the game, but basically we'll play as the allies. Uh, we have three commanders, we have nine paratroopers, we have two Bren Mark 1s, and also a set of grenades for each of our boys as well. So let's dive in. As I said, our objective is to uh, control all objectives uh, before the time runs out, which is super easy and then we start off as well so right here as you can see this is the smallest of the scenarios in the arnhem uh, offensive and uh it is our turn so every turn uh i take a turn the axis take a turn and every turn is split up into five different phases we'll talk about the phases as we get to them but it's super simple. So the command phase. The command phase basically allows you to call in any support artillery, mortars, rolling barrages with smoke, um, as well as any artillery from planes as well if you have any in reserve. You can also readjust your units. So if you want to combine or split your divisions, which we're not going to have to do because uh, this is a kind of more entry-level scenario, uh, you can do that in the command phase. 
we don't have any of that to do, so we'll just move on to the fire phase. Now, the interesting thing about the fire phase going second is we haven't moved yet, so you almost have to think a turn ahead. Uh, also, you can't move a unit that you're shooting with. So if you shot in the fire phase, you can't then move that unit. So you have to almost think where your units are going to be in a little bit of time, um, which is fine. Obviously, we can't see anyone, so no one to shoot, so we'll move on to the move phase. In the move phase, we will be moving on. So now we have our units right here. You can see we have Hopkins, Lewis, James, and just a squad of paratroopers, no commander in there. Now, the reason why you want to have good commanders is because they offer you amazing bonuses so for example lewis this is major lewis right here gives us a minus two to all our rolls which is awesome you want to be rolling as low as possible on all your attack rolls and damage rolls and we get a minus two to that that's awesome basically negates the heavy cover which if, if any of the german units are in these houses it will almost negate that that's a plus three to their defense um so we almost get rid of that which is just yeah incredible it really really is um so yeah on these units as you can see we have uh five five six on our paratroopers and one three one on james i know the first one is the attack value i think the second one is the defense value and then the fourth one is movement but i'm actually not 100 percent sure on the last two um but yeah it's attack defense and movement i'm pretty sure so here we go so oh god i don't mean to do that uh it's not an undo button as well uh there really should be an undo button or maybe this is an undo button no, this is exit map this is load and tow assault uh vehicle movement going reversing yeah there really should be an undo button in this game i feel like because i did not mean to click that um but yeah we're gonna have to definitely move them off because i don't want to get killed but what i could have done is i could have split these guys so i could have done this and then moved that into james's unit so for example i'm gonna do this and then i'm gonna get james with an extra unit because he still has space i believe um, for an extra unit so we're gonna go boom 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 and i'm gonna leave james right here and then they're gonna merge up next turn which is gonna be really good so as you can see james now has more units now it wouldn't be a bad idea to give more units to to lewis but i don't think he can hold more in his stack we're gonna come down here as you can see so it costs one movement point to move across open terrain in more urban regions such as houses or woods it costs two so that's gonna hurt us a little bit we're gonna move up with lewis and my objective is to basically try and take this house line um and then focus anything down in this little quadrant uh, and then push towards the objective i assume the ai is gonna move up and obviously hold these houses this bridge uh this church what i assume is a church will probably very much defended so we're gonna have to worry about that now i could delay for a turn as well if i wanted to and merge up these paratroopers but i think i'm gonna wait an extra turn uh, and just come down here yeah and then these paratroopers can fill up I, I kind of wasted their movement a little bit and i should have done more of that in the command phase as well but as you can see now these yeah so these guys so yeah hopkins has actually has another space as well so that unit's gonna go in there but everybody else has bigger stacks and i feel like in this mission where we're just trying to blitz the enemy defense having these bigger stacks is going to be better obviously it means the air can focus focus on they get one turn to shoot me they get like one unit can shoot one unit so the fact that i'm bulking up into these bigger divisions means that they're going to be able to do a lot more damage to me um whereas if i was to split everybody up they'd only be able to shoot one unit at a time through the phases uh we now get the assault phase uh this is basically if you're going to, into melee combat of anybody granted we don't need to so we're just going to move up here and we get to take the free movement and uh it's going to make it a little bit easier to move forward Okay, the axes now go, so they run through their turns in the same order. The command, fire, movement, defensive fire, which is actually my go. I get to I get to shoot if I'm in, you know, if if um the AI's moved in the open or I can see them. I actually get to shoot in my turn, which is nice. And as I said, I think my objective is I'm gonna hold these houses. I'm gonna throw James down this road. Lewis is gonna be my main dude to hold fire because he gets like basically to, to fire off from the enemy i think it's gonna be a great idea so now it's my defensive fire we don't need to we have not we can't see anything so we can't defensive fire and we are waiting of course there is also line of sight as well something I, I didn't mention so if we take a look at that you can see what every unit can see so right now we can't see past these houses these houses are are blocking us in quite nicely uh which means they can't see us but we're gonna we're about to be shot i think we're, yeah, we're about to be shot at uh, and there's something for us to fire at so now the movement so I want to basically move this unit as fast as I can down here to see if I can see anything. I can't. Okay, James can go. James has two grenades in his unit. Yeah, James has two grenades in his unit. So we're going to move 
Oh, do I want to move? I don't want to be. I don't want to be left in the open. But I can also assault phase in. Yeah. Um. Okay. We can't see anything here. That's fine, bro. I just don't want to get caught in the open because you also get up basically an Overwatch as well. I maybe should have moved Lewis up uh, a little bit, but then I can I can assault this. Let's move Hopkins up first. Into into this house. And into this one. There you go. That's what we were expecting to see. Okay. I don't know how much movement I have left on these guys. Because I could also get into this house and really cut down my fire. Um. No. Oh, God. I, I shouldn't have done that. Now he's going to be able to shoot me with defensive fire. Okay. And then Lewis just blitzes up here. Gets into here. Um, and I think we just have to... Oh, no. Because then we can assault into here. Can he see me here? I don't know if he can see that or if it's just showing it because I can move there. I don't think he can see there. Can he definitely see... Yeah, it's almost showing it. Yeah, it's definitely showing it even if I'm not there. I don't think he can see there. Oh, good, he can't. Okay, I'm going to move Lewis out here and then we're going to assault into this building here. Because Lenson doesn't have a great setup. He has two rifles... And a general. You can also see their bulk, their bulky rifle divisions as well. Um, because I'll have some smaller ones. I actually don't have any smaller. I haven't taken any casualties. So you'll you'll see when I take casualties that the picture goes from two paratroopers down to one. And, and their stats will obviously change as well. Okay, they'll be able to defensive fire now. And they'll, they'll, they'll light Hopkins up. Oh, no! Oh my god, they rolled so good. So we'll be able to take a look at the damage rolls soon. Um, the AI blitz is through them, but when I do damage, you guys will be able to see it. That is not good. Hopkins just got really unlucky. He's in heavy cover right now, which basically means that should not have happened, like, at all. It, that basically means he should have been fine. Uh, the AI just rolled really well. They have minus ones, but I still get a plus two to my, uh, to my saves. And to take damage like that bad... That was really bad. So I lost an entire unit of paratroopers. I think this spare one's going to have to move in and help out. Is now my assault phase, though. So I'm going to move up here. Oh, my God. And we discovered another regiment. That's not good. Um, I'm going to move over here with Hopkins so that he can basically get reinforced next turn. Okay. The access turns. They're going to hit Lewis hard. I may be sure I left Lewis here to ignore because they're going to both shoot Lewis now. Which might not have been a good idea. But we'll see. Again, this game is all about learning. Yeah, they're going to hit Lewis up. But I should be fine. Yeah, there you go. So if you look at them, is it going to hold? Yeah. You can see the modifiers. I'm getting a plus three. They managed to do a, a little bit of casualties. Is that just one unit? Oh my god. I'm getting lit up here. That was a minus two to their roll. But still, they're rolling pretty good. And uh, yeah, nice. Now I get to fire back though, which is good. So everybody you can see can start firing. I really want to whittle down this unit, like, ASAP if I can. Yeah, maybe just wipe down an entire division. So I know James is our best bet. Okay, I'm going to, yeah, open up. Because if I can clear this out in defensive fire, that would be great. So as you can see, we have a... So now let's look at the stats a little bit so you can understand the dice rolling. We have an uh, anti-personnel fire of six. So you'll come down to this and see where you roll on the damage roll. The more attack value you have, basically the easier it is to wound the enemy. If you have a plus 41 attack roll, which is like dedicated to like tanks. Um, if you, even if you roll an 11, you're still going to do a bit of damage. Um, basically, on this, you want to get the, the, the dice roll uh, to do damage. So if you've got really small attack value, you need to roll at six. Obviously, there's modifiers as well. So right now, uh, my shooting was a minus, basically a plus three, but like a a minus three to my advantage, if that makes sense. It's like the other way around. You want to roll low instead of high uh, on the damage table. So they get a, a plus three to their defense roll, and I get a minus one because of my leadership, um, but they still get a plus two overall. So it adds my, my dice roll. I rolled an eight, and it goes to a 10. So as you can see, I would have needed to roll a seven to inflict any damage on them. Uh, unfortunately, not the case. I would have had to have 29 or to 40 attack value to even do any damage on that roll. That's fine. Uh, we'll be able to open up now with Lewis. And there you go. Much easier that time. We have actually have grenades. Oh, grenades actually affected when we was close. That's amazing. I wasn't sure if it did, if it was only melee uh, that that affected. 
that's good. So as you can see, we rolled a seven, even with their plus three, we negate it. Uh, and we got 14, so we're actually at a row down, which is nice. And we did two damage to them, which is great. Uh, and you can see that, that Rifleman has gone down from two soldiers to one, reducing his effectiveness pretty massively. I don't think anyone else can see. Yeah, everybody else is line of sight blocked now. I'm interested if, if Lensing tries to assault me. I doubt he will try and breach me. Yeah, he doesn't. Okay, command phase. I don't think I want to do anything. Um, we were on turn three now, which is a little bit scary, honestly. So, yeah, okay. Hopkins, I mean, Hopkins has to move, right? Because he's about to get reinforcements. I'm, I'm even tempted to bring this paratrooper down to resupply Lewis. Okay, we missed, unfortunately. You can also pin the enemy as well, which basically reduces their effectiveness, which is fine. Um, these guys are going to hold. You guys can't shoot. I'm probably going to use James to assault Lenson, I think. God, they've got hard cover as well. Yeah, both of these aren't very good. I guess we'll just try and break down this division a little bit more. With our grenade rolls. Oh, we massacred them. We rolled a three up to a four because of a minus two plus three. Gives plus one, obviously, in their favor. That was deadly. Yeah, we wiped out we wiped out a small dude and a big dude. Uh, all in that. Yeah, maybe, maybe this is like their HP. Um, yeah, I really should have looked that up. That was my bad. But they do have a, a manual as well you can go through. Um, but yeah, I actually just didn't see. And it doesn't tell you, I don't think, anywhere. Uh, obvious. Exactly what they are. Um, but yeah, that was good. That's really going to reduce them down when James can come in and clear that up. Move phase now. So, as I said, I'm going to probably yeah james definitely has to move in here and we're going to so you also have moves like this this is an infantry assault move which cuts your movement in half but gives you plus one to cover modifiers which we're going to need to do i think so that's basically when you're moving out in the open we take that fire or we get a plus one to our, uh, our defense roll they get minus two and also minus one for their leadership uh minus two because it's a opportunity of fire uh, which is good. They can't now defensive fire, uh, which is good. Uh, and also a plus three as well. So they actually almost wounded me. If it wasn't for that assault move, they actually would have got me. Uh, they ordered a six plus one, obviously, because of that. So that, you know, pro gamer right here. Uh, now we're going to leave James here. James's goal is to break Lenson uh, right there. And uh, yeah, then we're going to, we're going to have to try and assault this, I think, next turn uh, and just blitz down here. Okay, the AI gets a defensive fire with these guys again. Lewis is going to get... Oh, I forgot to move my paratroopers. No! Oh, I'm so bad. Also, this is what should have happened beforehand. So losing as many men as I did was really bad. That's so... We're on the clock right here, and I think I just messed up. Because it's going to take a lot of maneuvering to get round here. Oh, we're going to have to go super crazy now. Either way, we're assaulting here. So they get a plus three, but we should have a minus one from our general and minus two from our grenades. Yeah, we massacred them right there. Um, yeah, we, we actually took a lot of casualties, though. Five damage right there. Assigning that. We rolled, like, amazingly as well, didn't we? Yeah, we, we, we absolutely demolished them. But still, I guess assaulting... Yeah, assaulting is, uh, is still really hard. And again, you can dive in here if you, if you need to check stuff out. Okay, well, we're just going to have to move. So, yeah. Can I get a scene from here? I can't call. Uh, unless they move, obviously. And we assault and then... Oh, God damn it. If I was to go here, could he see? I see me can, right? Yeah, and we get smashed there. So Lewis is going to move down, I guess, and then make his way around. I might just try and blitz Lewis as these guys try and hold these guys down. I don't think we're going to do this, though. I think the AI has got too many defenses set up. That we're going to... I mean, we've got two turns to do it, basically. I just... Yeah, them assaulting is bad. And we got really unlucky. The amount of casualties we took, like, this is what should be happening. It should be hard to break someone in a closed building. But hey, I mean, you know, I'm sure historically in Operation Market Garden, you know, the British commanders went like, damn, we rolled badly. Okay, defense. So we get to shoot back now, and I think we have to work on this, even though it's going to be like a... Oh, we can't even hit that. You guys can't see any of that, yeah. Yeah, I think we just have to. We'll take our shots. You never know. Yeah, unfortunately, we were, we were one off right there. This would be amazing if James could. Yeah, no. <laughs> no way. Okay, okay, okay. 
Uh, so yeah, no assaulting going on. I don't think we're definitely not going to be able to assault that, especially if they have grenades. Both these squads have grenades as well now. Uh, nothing we can do in the command phase, right? Nothing we can break up. No point moving grenades or anything. What I should have done, though, actually, is I should have maybe moved some grenades around um, on my guys. Yeah, we have no, we have one grenade left there on Hopkins, and that's it. Okay, interesting. So I, I, I think we just have to try and break this. And that's really all the shooting I can do, right? Because uh, Lewis has to move up to here. Or maybe even into the open to try and blitz. Like, we have to rush this. We've only got two turns left. So we can go here, maybe. I mean, have the firing next turn. Okay, let's do that. Move in phase. Um, okay, cool. I think we can go here without being seen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can even get here. Okay, I'm going to try and go around with Lewis then. And just use Lewis as, like, my, my safety. Even though Lewis is definitely better set up. Yeah, Lewis is going to chill here. Because he's going to have to move it. He definitely could move. But I think he's going to be too focused on the front. And he should actually be able to see me as well. Like, I should be out of line of sight of both his units. So, hopefully, Lewis can just go in and sneak the back objectives. Would be perfect. Uh, Hopkins can move here and then here. And then these paratroopers can just go there. Yep. Okay. Defensive fire now. Cool, yeah. We're, we're rolling much better now. Well, the AI is not rolling as good. Okay, the assault phase. We get to move again. The question is, like, do I have to hold both of these positions, I wonder? I don't know. Either way, we're going to bulk up James. I mean, Hopkins is, I guess, going to move into here. I'm going to try and basically keep them busy. I'm going to try and make them feel like I'm in front of them and they're going to have to keep on hitting. I'm not sure if I have to take both of them objectives or not. We can always split up a unit if we need to. So we, we will see. We will see. Okay, yeah, good. Like, this is what should have been happening. Okay, that was a little bit painful. They only rolled two damage. Is that enough to kill? No, it's not enough to kill him. But you can see my guy's gone down to one, uh, one dude now. We can now defensive fire, and I think we can defensive fire both of these guys now. So we'll just fire off some shots. <laughs> nice. We got a free. Suck that. Yeah, that was good. Two casualty points inflicted. Okay, still not as good as the AI. But reducing that unit down nicely. Um, and then you guys obviously can't see anything. They're not assaulting me. Because, yeah, sneaking around that, un that, that unit has is, is definitely helped us out. And I've given the AI like, something to focus on in the front phase. Uh, so can I split these guys up if I want to? If I was to do this and go like that. Oh, okay. I've split up these guys. Okay, that makes sense now. Okay, cool. That's fine, though. Yeah, that's if I really want to spread it out, spread out some units, which I don't think I do, right? Yeah, I want to keep my units bulky. But it's nice that you can, like, spread out as much as you want to. Yeah, we'll just keep on trying to pin down this unit. I doubt getting very lucky. Um, but, you know, you might as well. Yeah, no. Uh, and we'll just leave. And then over here, we will go. So we'll take the, we'll take the, the you guys, move them into there. And then you guys go into there. And we win. Nice. It was a major victory. I don't know if I would class it as a major victory. I basically pinned the AI in place and then snuck around, <laughs> uh, which gave me that advantage. And we also took more losses. But I guess we were the assaulting force. Yeah, we definitely learned a harsh, harsh lesson in this one. So just before we end the video, I want to show you guys the, the large scale scenario uh, right here. Look at this bad boy. So the Germans come on here and you are, of course, in the, uh, the defensive position. Your objective is to hold the town. You're being attacked from the back and, of course, the front. Uh, you do have some pretty cool positions, though. You have a lot of AT guns as well to be hitting their, their armored transports and stuff. And of course, your, your back is going to be the, the biggest problem right there. You have a lot of soldiers, and it can get pretty hectic. Like, imagine rolling through this um, as you go, uh, just firing on here. You can choose the different type of rounds you have as well. High explosive or armor piercing, which will, of course, go armor piercing on this. Uh, actually, I should have to sit around, do I? Yeah, you can see the, the damage task right there. Oh my god, we, uh, we didn't pierce. God damn it. What is this as well? 
That's just a half track. Oh, it's a Puma. And a half track, I think? Yeah, Puma and a half track. Um, yeah, so as you can see, these scenarios get pretty goddamn crazy. They really, really do. Um, but yeah, that was Valor and Victory. I definitely recommend you check it out. If you're looking to get into war games, which like, if you watch this channel, you probably are interested in them. This is definitely a good one. And in no time, you'll be playing Gary Grigsby's War and Bees too, trust me. So thank you very much for checking out today's video. Go check out the brand new Arnhem DLC link down below in the description. I'll see you guys in the next one.